This is probably one of the simpler methods to make a dry erase board. Just take a glass picture frame, replace the picture with a white background, or just turn your image upside down. And that works pretty well, and it's pretty simple to do. One of the benefits of using glass for a dry erase board is that it erases a lot faster, easier, and cleaner than those conventional dry erase boards do. This little dry erase board hangs on my refrigerator, and it's made from a little piece of tempered glass. The backside has those magnets that you probably have in your refrigerator, the flexible kind. In order to make this, I first spray painted one side of the glass white, and then I attached the magnets on the backside with just using spray adhesive. I would recommend that for any dry erase board you use tempered glass. It's much harder and harder to break or scratch. In this video I'm going to make a dry erase board that's very similar to this but on a much bigger scale. The molding that's going to span the perimeter of my dry erase board is about as basic as it comes. I just ripped a one inch piece off of a regular 2x4 and then I put an identical chamfer on three sides and then this is the groove that the glass will sit into. Because the dimensions of my dry erase board are pretty large, it's 20 inches by 40 inches, I have to make special considerations. So you can see I left a lot of meat here for me to screw one piece to the other to give the side rails a lot of support. I also allowed a healthy chunk to remain on this back side. That will enable me to attach a support piece on the back side later. It helps to reduce the flex on the glass. I prep my piece of tempered glass by first attaching newspaper with masking tape to the front face to protect it. The backside that I'm painting I cleaned really well with mineral spirits. curious to take off the newspaper and see how my dry erase board turned out, but before I do I'm going to cover the painted surface with contact paper. This will be for no other reason than to protect the painted surface from getting nicked. First I cut about an eighth of an inch off of the side of each 2x4 just to make sure it's flat. Just to reduce the amount of sanding that I have to do, I'm going to plane down all the faces of my molding. While I was still at the table saw, I cut a couple pieces of scrap, and what I'll do with these is feed them through before and after my trim work, and then the planer snipe will be put onto these instead of onto my finished pieces. First I'll make the slot for the glass, then I'll make the chamfers. And here is the finished molding. There's one more thing I have to do with the table saw, and that is to cut a strip of material that is the same thickness as this, and that will be for a backer board behind the glass that keeps it from flexing too much. I'm finishing these with a latex 
garage floor paint and then later I'm going to apply a lacquer finish over top and I know you're not supposed to use lacquer with latex but I've done it before and it works pretty well if you prefer to be a little more cautious you could use a water-based top coat like this polycrylic it's pretty hard to make 2x4 look nice it took quite a few coats of the gray stuff but I finally got it to be somewhat presentable after about three coats of lacquer it got a pretty nice shine to it I fit my two opposite end pieces on so that I can get a measurement this measurement will be to the long point of each of my 45 degree miters even though I feel pretty confident that this method of measurement is pretty accurate I'm still gonna cut them a little long at first I'd rather ease into it. I've way too much invested into these pieces at this point, so I'll take it slow. Adding a zero clearance wooden fence to your miter saw like this provides support on the back side and reduces tear out on the back of your molding. I fit them all together, but you'll notice that I didn't glue the miters at this point because I still have some work to do on the underside. I want to connect the top and bottom rails together using a support bracket like this. It's a little tricky to screw, so I made a little jig that'll help me do it. I'll show you how it works in a second. This support rail will prevent the glass from flexing too much if anybody presses on it hard while they're writing. In order to get this slot, I just made this crude u-shaped jig it slides over top and then the vise grips it and squeezes the piece and then it enables me to drill just a little bit in so I can make the countersink for my screw Right now my goal is only to put them in temporarily just so that I can pilot the holes. Later I'll install them permanently after the miters have been glued, but I can do this with a hand screwdriver. I could have never fit a battery drill that close to the glass. glue has set up overnight so it's time to put the support rails in. In order to hang my whiteboard I want to put four of these keyholes into the top and bottom rails. This is done with a keyhole router bit you can see the screw goes in and then stops. It's a wonderful way to hang things. The jig is pretty easy to construct. It doesn't allow the router to move left and right, and it only allows it to move about a half of an inch front and back. The piece of fishing line running down the middle is only to help me line up my center point perfectly. Well, luckily I managed to get all four keyholes without incident. If you look up close at the keyhole, you can see that I widened the whole part of it with this homemade sanding countersink thing. This is so it's a little more forgiving for the screw to find its way into the keyhole. I would like to add one finishing touch by adding a stone texture over top of the high gloss gray, just to tone it down a little bit. The last thing I'll add is this little marker tray.
Now I guess all that's left is to test it out. One of the single most important tools a woodworker can have is mathematical ability. Since this project is a gift that is to hang in the office of a math professor who has sacrificed countless hours to satisfy my endless questioning, it just wouldn't be right if I didn't use this board for some math while I have your attention. In my opinion, the most important math skill a carpenter can have is an ability to use the Pythagorean theorem. And even carpenters who never heard of it are usually familiar with this 3-4-5 triangle. If you're a carpenter and you don't know what the Pythagorean theorem is, please pause this video and study what's on the screen right now. I'm going to show you a less common application of the Pythagorean theorem, which is the square root of 2. It can be used to easily find diagonals when both sides are the same. When you have a right triangle, which means a triangle that has a 90 degree angle here, you can use the square root of 2 to determine this side, which is called the hypotenuse. This might not seem all that interesting, but you have to think what you can really use this for. Imagine that your triangle, instead of 1 inch, is 12 inches here, and 12 inches on this side as well. Then all you have to do in order to find C, or this hypotenuse, is multiply the square root of 2 times 12 inches. Just about every calculator in the world has a square root button. 2 square root times 12 and this would be right around 17 inches for the hypotenuse. This is a really quick and easy method to square something up perfectly as long as both A and B are the same size. Now I'm going to give you something really interesting to wrap your brain around. Pretend on this cube that this is 1 inch that means that the diagonal is the square root of 2. Now pretend that you want to get from this point on the cube to this point on the cube. The farthest away from each other most possible points on the cube. And that forms a triangle as well that goes through the center of the cube. We know that this distance is 1 since it's a 1 inch cube. So this distance is also going to be 1. Since we've established two values of, an, of our triangle, the square root of 2 and 1, we have enough information to determine the third side. So we'll write the Pythagorean theorem. And we'll replace it with our known values. And now we solve for C. This means that the distance between the two outermost points on a cube is actually the square root of 3. I really hope you found this interesting and useful. Thanks a lot for watching.